These are Christian artists that are <laughs> literally charting on the Christian uh, charts. The Christian music industry allows bands to come together, and I've showed examples like with Jars of Clay, for instance, and even the Newsboys. Now, Amy Grant also uh, endorses and is good friends with, now, if you don't know Derek Webb, oh boy. Now, Derek Webb, if you're not familiar, was a part of a very popular band called Plum is probably best known for her song, Need You Now. But the chorus, here, in fact, I'll sing it so you know what song it is, okay, you ready? <clears throat> Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. You know, the Christian music industry has a dirty little secret. Well, I guess it's not really a secret when they're doing it right in front of our eyes. Too many Christians today uh, are blind, ignorant to what's going on right in front of them because too many Christians today don't read the Bible. And you know, the world comes in, false teachers come in and say, you know what, this is what love really is. This is what Jesus was really like. And Christians are like, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. So I should be inclusive. I should be accepting. I, true love means accepting someone hook, line, and sinker completely in their sin. Not leading them to the truth of the cross and the fact that we were set free from sin by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No, all that is uh, its so out of date. And so, so many Christians fall for what the world is trying to trick Christians into believing. And it's because we don't read the Bible. I want to show you something about the Christian music industry that is very dark. It's really no surprise, unfortunately. There's a Christian artist named Plum. Now, you've heard of Plum, and if you haven't heard of Plum, then you've definitely heard one of her songs. She is all over Christian radio, K-Love, K-Dove, name it. She's on Christian radio radio. She's been around for years and years and years. Plum is probably best known for her song, Need You Now. Now, she has a few other hits, but Need You Now was absolutely uh, just a song that rocketed her to the top for a little bit. Um, she's kind of faded now, but you know, this song was played on Christian radio over and over and over and over. Unfortunately, I can't play it because I'll get hit with a copyright. I don't want to do that. But the chorus, here, in fact, I'll sing it so you know what song it is. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> How many times have you heard me cry out? Okay, okay, I won't sing it, but the, it's, How many times have you heard me cry out, God, please take this? How many times have you given me strength to just keep breathing? You've heard this song. It's an epic sounding song. And it goes on to say, oh, I need you. God, I need you now. Plum is a self-described Christian. She has been for years and years and years. She's been a Christian artist and you don't really think much beyond it what she puts out you can listen to because she's a Christian artist so it's Christian music well unfortunately once again we have lost another one within the Christian music industry this is Plum now she decided to put her pronouns in her bio like all good followers of the world do but Plum is now a she her of course it's, kind of tell. But she says, I love everyone. Okay, that's good. Advocate for the marginalized in any and every way I can. Ally. Rainbow flag. Uh-oh. Hey, I just want to say real quick, we got some of our new merch out right now. This is one of my favorite shirts, Read the Bible. If you want to support this channel, you can check out the link below. It says shop our merch. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this video, would you hit that subscribe button and be a part of this community? And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread this message. Yes, Plum is now a pronouns in the bio ally of LGB. Unfortunately, all of a sudden, out of nowhere it seems like, Plum just decided to be a radical, progressive 
Christian. I mean, you just scroll through her profile and there's all kinds of different quotes from, in fact, here's one, from a very progressive reverend. When we Christians become convinced that we are the only authority on truth, that anyone who opposes us is evil, and that things will only get better if we are in charge of all positions of power, that is when we know we are no longer worshiping God. We are worshiping ourselves. What? Now, if you notice, false teachers love to take truth and twist it just enough to make you the bad guy so that you can fall for their tricks. What this man is saying is that you, as a Christian, following Christ, if you think that Christ is the only way to truth and is the only source of truth, then you're worshiping yourself. Because if you try to live in a way that upholds the truth of God's word and the truth that Jesus proclaimed, then you, you're you wrong. To put, to sum this all up in a very short way is to say, Jesus is not the only source of truth. And you see this, she posted this as well. This is a United Methodist Church, which if you are a part of a United Methodist Church at this point, get out of there. She posted a billboard that said, when we fight for the freedom of others, it truly sets us all free. Oh, wow. That's, oh, and then you look a little closer. An inclusive and reconciling community with the rainbow hands here. Oh, okay. This is a progressive church. This is an absolute cesspool of wickedness. The freedom they're talking about on this sign is a bondage to sin. Plum also endorses this man, Colby Martin, a self-described radical progressive Christian that wants to dismantle Christianity, at least biblical Christianity, and show you that Christianity is a lot bigger. Christianity involves more than just God's word. It involves our own truth. And so she's obviously, Plum, is being radicalized by men like this. She's promoting them. She's learning from them. And she even says right here that he is a respected voice in the progressive Christianity movement. And she talks about how she's learned a lot from him and how she was raised as a in a white, middle-class, two-parent, evangelical home. And she goes on to say how absolutely horrible that is. You see, they try to twist your mind into believing that having two parents and growing up uh, under the truth of God's word is like the most evil thing you can do. You must be a part of this dismantling to truly reach truth. Now, I want to show you this post as well. Plum just posted this recently, like a week ago. And this is Plum alongside on the left over here. This is someone named Flamey Grant. Uh, a, a dwag performer that goes by the stage name Flamey Grant. Obviously a play on Amy Grant. And Amy Grant's going to play into all this in just a little bit. But Plum is endorsing Flamey Grant and Derek Webb on the right over here. Now, if you don't know Derek Webb, oh boy, this is Derek Webb. Derek Webb also has his pronouns in his bio to show solidarity. And he just put out a Christian album. You can see the Jesus Hypothesis, my first Christian and gospel album in 10 years. Now, Derek Webb, if you're not familiar, was a part of a very popular band called Cademan's Call. They were very popular in the 90s. And they just had a reunion tour, like last year. And they reunited to all the original members to sing their old Christian songs. Well, Derek Webb has been a radical progressive Christian for years and years and years and years and years. And so you're going to see that the Christian music industry allows bands to come together. And I've showed examples like with Jars of Clay, for instance, and even the Newsboys, uh, where members of those bands are completely radical, anti-God, uh, anti-truth, anti-God's word 
And yet the Christian music industry still promotes them and puts them front and center in front of Christians to sing Christian songs. But again, we as Christians are so ignorant because we don't read the Bible for ourselves. Instead, we wait for the world to tell us what true Christianity is and act accordingly. And that's what is going on with Derek Webb here. Now, Derek Webb seems like a very nice guy, I will say. Derek Webb seems very, very nice. Like someone, if you were sitting down having a conversation, he would be very cordial, very nice, very kind. But that doesn't excuse what is obviously going on that is against the Word of God here. Now you see that Derek Webb here. Here's Derek Webb and Flamey Grant. These are Christian artists that are <laughs> literally charting on the Christian uh, charts on, on iTunes. You can see here, uh, Flamey Grant featuring Derek Webb, their song was number 80 on the charts. And then they got some exposure and became number four on the Christian charts. Right under Dax, Phil Wickham, Brandon Lake, of course, Maverick City Music, huge, huge red flags with Maverick City Music. Now this is Flamey Grant. This is the artist, uh, obviously the uh, play on the name Amy Grant. And Flamey here is a Christian artist. Again, this is what is being promoted on the Christian charts here. You can see again here at number four, Flamey Grant right under CC Winans and Chris Tomlin this time. Big surprise. Well, I can't play any of Flamey's music um, and I don't wish to, but uh, I, I don't even have any ill will towards Derek Webb or Flamey Grant. And I, and, and I love them enough to say what the truth is. That's the issue, is that saying the truth is hatred to the world. They hate the truth because the truth confronts, it convicts. And we've been told in our society that that's mean, that's hateful, that's rude, that's not acceptable. You should be deleted if you tell the actual truth. Instead, this is the new truth. You can see, this is a post from Flamey, that God is love, rainbow, with all the dwag. And unfortunately, we've lost Plum. So if you hear Plum's songs on Christian radio, just know it's really not that big of a surprise because the Christian music industry is uplifting and supporting and putting these very people at the forefront of the industry. I mean, we've seen this for years with Amy Grant. Amy Grant is not a Christian singer. She's not a Christian artist, yet she is literally called by Christian news outlets, by the Christian music industry the queen of Christian pop. She is hailed as one of the biggest Christian music artists of all time, yet she is not a Christian artist. And she's tried to make that clear herself, but she's just continued to write the coattails of Christian music because it's gotten her to where she is. If you'll remember, she got the Kennedy Center Honors Award, which is a very demonic, absolutely demonic, award that, that they they essentially if you look into who gets the kennedy center honors and the way the ceremonies are it's this is demonic and she just accepts it and you'll also remember that amy grant hosted her niece's wedding uh to a, another woman and she just who cares it's just a wedding. It made our family better. And she actually responded, Amy Grant responds to criticism for hosting Nisa's wedding. She said, I never chase any of those rabbits down the rabbit hole, meaning the backlash that she got. I love my family. I love those brides. They're wonderful. Our family is better. And you should be able to be who you are with your family and be loved by them. Do you understand that your love is sending your family to hell. And this isn't just about LGB. This is any family member that you see in a habitual, continual sin, whatever it is, if you just continually assure them, I love you enough to allow you to stay in your sin, no matter what it is, 
then you're just loving them to hell. You're loving them in a way that separates them from Jesus, from eternal life. That's not love at all. Now, Amy Grant also went on a J radio show called Proud Radio uh, on iTunes. Uh, she went on uh, uh, Proud Radio and, and said this to the, the J host, Who loves us more than the one who made us? Then she explained that we as individuals are not a surprise to God. Nothing about who we are, what we've done. That's why, to me, it's so important to set a welcome table. Ooh, She said, because I was invited to a table where someone said, don't be afraid. You're loved. Jay, straight. It does not matter. She told all those listening that it doesn't matter how we behave. It doesn't matter how we're wired. We're all our best selves when we believe to our core, I'm loved. This is so false here. All you're doing is saying, just tell yourself you're loved and you can remain in your sin and God will accept that and you'll go to heaven. That, that's literally antithetical to the gospel message, to the reason Jesus died and rose again. This is anti-Christianity, yet she is hailed as the queen of Christian pop. This is so backwards. Now, Amy Grant also uh, endorses and is good friends with a woman named Brandi Carlisle, an LGB uh, country singer. And this is Brandy Carlisle here on the issue of Billboard's Pied 2022. Brandy Carlisle. This is what Brandy Carlisle had to say about Amy Grant. I didn't realize until I started digging into the catalog how much a part of my childhood Amy's songbook is. It's absolutely just intertwined with growing up. I always knew her as a faith-based artist, and as I got older and I joined the industry, she supported me. She came out in support of me. To have that kind of affirmation from a faith-based artist, I think it was really important, and I think she is really brave. I couldn't be more proud to be here to honor her tonight. Now, Carlisle was chosen to perform for Amy Grant as she accepted her award. And this is what Carlisle said. I approached it with a lot of humility and gratitude for what she's done for me in my life. As a faith-based person as well, to have the kind of life affirmation that I've gotten from her, Carlisle said, I think personally and publicly as a choir person, that's been really big and important in my growth. And then she said, Amy was one of the first people to reach out to me and invite me on her television show in my early 20s. And then just recently, you know, on social media, has been really supportive of me and other LGB artists specifically. I know she's taking some heat for it. I know it hasn't been easy, and I admire her so much for that. Amy Grant is unapologetically affirming. She, she is broadening the, the faith, broadening Christianity, as she said in her acceptance speech for the Kennedy Center Honors, that she is broadening the road to Christ. And that's demonic. If you want a deeper dive into what's going on with Amy Grant, I did a video not too long ago called Amy Grant is not who you think she is. It has almost a million views. You can go check that video out to get a deeper look at what's really going on with Amy Grant right now. Do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? You know, I, I can't honestly answer on that in the sense of I have too many people that I love that they are homosexual. Um, I don't know. I actually had a conversation with someone last night about it, and I was like, I can't say one way or the other i i'm not god so when yeah. people when people ask questions like that that's what my go-to is like i just say read the bible and find out for yourself because and when you find out let me know again when we get into the word of god we start to see clearly what's really going on around us we have the actual truth of the God-breathed word in our hearts and in our minds. And we're able to see through the untruth and see the actual truth. And so 
This is 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen to this. This is Paul. He says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Now I want you to understand that Paul's talking about the last days in the current sense. You know, it's been the last days since the end of the apostolic era. He goes on, For people will be lovers of self. Pay attention to this word, love. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Just open TikTok and you can see that right in front of our eyes. Ungrateful, unholy, again TikTok, (laughs) heartless, unappeasable, unappeasable. If you notice, like Romans 1 actually says that, that people will be inventors of evil, that those who are depraved and debased of mind will be inventors of evil. They will need to invent new ways of committing evil acts because it won't be enough for them anymore. And we're seeing here that these people will be unappeasable. They will be unable to find appeasement to be satisfied in their current sin. They will not ever be enough, have enough, feel enough. So they will continually go down this deep, dark road of sin and shame, desperately trying to find a way to feel fulfilled, but it's never going to work. But it goes on, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, if you notice, Paul starts with love and ends with love here and if you think about it the world tells us that true love is accepting people in their sin and not calling out their sin it's because the world has told us a lie about love and christians are accepting that lie the world's trying to tell us that true love means accepting people in their sin and allowing them to just go to hell willy-nilly, we're just supposed to love people to hell. And that's not love at all. In fact, you really have to hate somebody, remember, to not tell them the truth. How much do you hate that person living in a deep, dark despair, full of sin and shame? How much do you have to hate them to not tell them the truth? that Jesus can set them free. This is because we have a backwards view on love. We have twisted love. Verse five, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. You know, there's so many people within the Christian music industry that lead you in your worship songs that have the appearance of godliness, but really are continually evil in what they're doing. They have no interest in truly glorifying and worshiping God. Their interest is making money, appeasing themselves, loving themselves, loving money, uh, and, and gratifying the flesh, which again is unappeasable. It is a constant road of destruction that they are on but they're leading you in your worship as well. Verse six, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. Now this isn't talking about women as inferior. This isn't saying that women are being led astray because they're inferior. This is talking about uh, the same trick that Satan used in the garden. He waited for Eve to be alone. And then he went and he whispered in her ear, did God really say that? Did God really say you can't eat of the fruit of this tree? Did you know you'll be like God if you did? Satan lied to Eve when she was alone. And he's using his same tricks today to go in and capture women who are alone and that are burdened by their sins. And instead of them being led out of their sin and into freedom in Jesus Christ, Satan captures them. 
and leads them deeper into their sin and leads them astray by various passions. And you can see this, one of the things today so prominent in our culture is feminism. It just absolutely destroying everything. Verse 7, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. They will never be able to arrive at actual truth. That's why they are making it up as they go. And the further they make up the truth as they go along, the further they distance themselves and separate themselves from the real truth. And they're never actually able to attain it. Just as Janus and Jambres opposes Moses, so these men also oppose the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. This is a beautiful, hopeful reminder that no matter how successful these false teachers seem to be, no matter how successful this new truth that isn't really truth seems to be spreading in our culture, they will not get very far because their folly will be plain to all. And enough people will wake up and go, wait a minute, hold on, that's not actually truth. There is hope. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, I'd love to hear from you on a regular basis. And also hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread this message. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.